we're making sure that we're not obligated to the inmate, that we're not dependent on the inmate. But that's why we're put in this position. We have to be better than them. Because if we don't respect ourselves, we can't expect the public to. How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Gans, your host of Tear Talk. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Great question was sent my way through the email. And it said, why are we so divisive after a major incident? And I think that's a great question. I really do. I think it's a question that definitely comes from somebody with experience. And there are reasons, in my opinion, of why we are divided at first during a major incident. We'll come back from our sponsors. We're going to discuss some of those reasons. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. So if you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. I stand by for our sponsors. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Being a corrections officer takes its toll on even the strongest individuals. The constant need to perform at the highest level putting your life at risk in a hostile environment, and the mental scarring of traumatic experiences. 31% of corrections officers show symptoms of PTSD, and 66% of people with PTSD also suffer with a substance abuse problem. The Transformations First Responders Program is specially designed to help veterans and officers heal from the grips of addiction and PTSD in a comfortable, supportive, and serene setting. You are not alone. If you have questions about the services we offer, give us a call at 866-762-8454 to get more information on this affordable and life-changing program. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsors. This is a great question because the question highlights just a bit of experience because we all know that there is going to be that divide when a major incident occurs, even when a minor incident occurs, because everybody's going to be pushed into survival mode. They're going to look to identify what their role was, what their responsibilities are, and when they write it, they're writing it sort of in an isolated manner. And, and, and believe it or not, guys, and you guys are not going to like this, that's how it has to be done at first. We don't want people all in the same room crafting their reports because the reports wind up being too similar and 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 investigators or people that have to review the, the reports, they're going to see that there's a red flag there. And then it's going to give them a chance to divide and conquer. We don't want that. So when people tend to write their reports initially, these reports are going to be isolated and really don't highlight the interactions between the individuals who were involved. That's where the supervisor comes in and looks at all the reports before they write theirs. And they say, okay, well, these are, these are the individual reports. And this is, you know, interactions that we have that are going on that may not be noted because again, the person that wrote the report is writing it in an isolated manner. And the supervisor is now going to have to look to try to piece together what happened by those individual reports. And he's allowed to go back and he may say to someone, hey, you got to elaborate on this. And you guys can, guys, you guys don't realize that you can elaborate or add something to your report as long as it doesn't change the integrity of what you have written. As long as it doesn't change the integrity of what you have written. That's the key. So you guys are allowed to go back and elaborate, especially if there's something that you say that could involve somebody else and you don't note that in your original report. But again, the supervisor is going to look to read it, look to try to piece things together and obviously get his questions or her questions answered before it gets forwarded up. Because trust me, if they have questions at that level, you know damn well, those same questions are going to come up again at the higher level. Now, again, with the CYA, it is unfortunately at first, you may not realize that when you're putting stuff down, you're unintentionally throwing somebody else under the bus, but it is what it is, and that's where the supervisor is going to have to come in and look for that clarity because they want to make sure, because remember, they're responsible for everyone, that if someone's being thrown under the bus unintentionally, they're going to want to make sure that, that gets explained. Hey, did you notice that when this happened, 
uh, a lot of people are saying this. You're going to have to explain this. So you're going to have to go back and add what happened. Where were you? You know, whatever the case may be. But there is that initial survival mode. And it's the nature of the beast. It's something that I, I wish would not occur, but it occurs. And, and it's going to be because we're all at that time going to look to cover ourselves first. I don't care what anyone says. And I'm putting it right on Front Street. Most people don't want to even discuss this type, type of topic because of the controversy. But it's true, guys. That's what it is. That's the nature of the beast. We're going to look to cover ourselves first. That's where we become dependent on the supervisor to make sure that when they read those reports, they look for any of those discrepancies and they try to get someone to elaborate as to what's happening here. Because I'm reading these reports and this is what I'm noticing. This is what's coming up. So before I bring this up, do we want to get a chance to explain ourselves? What happened? And again, nothing in an effort to change the integrity of the report, but just an explanation as to why this has happened. I'm not saying to say it didn't happen. I'm telling you to explain to me why it happened. So that divide should hopefully be looked at from the supervisor, and then the supervisor will try to piece things together in a way that gives a greater detail to what happened from that higher level, and then initially get the questions answered that they may have. Because again, those questions are gonna come again when it gets to the higher level. So again, that divide happens because we're out for that CYA at the very beginning. The nature of the beast is we should be writing our reports in a manner that's away from everyone because we don't want our reports to come out too similar, guys, because again, it's the red flag. The supervisor is what will wind up bringing those reports to a complete picture, a giant detail of what happened. And if they have any questions that, that needs elaboration, that's what they need to go back and get. And again, remember guys, you can add to your reports as long as it doesn't change the integrity of what you have done. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post up a video. As always, guys, stay safe.